Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Peyton Anderson with Next Level Athletes. I'm thrilled to have Myron Harris on the podcast today. Myron is coming off his redshirt freshman season at running back with D2 Wayne State, where he rushed for 1,028 yards on 131 attempts with nine touchdowns. Additionally, he ranked toward the top in multiple statistical categories for Division II running backs, along with personal accolades earned within the program. Uh, Myron, first of all, thanks so much for coming on today. Hey, man. What's up? Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. And uh, let's start with your recruitment process coming out of high school. Uh, what was most eye-opening to you? Uh, what you found to be difficult about it? But ultimately, what led your to your commitment to Wayne State? Uh, my my recruitment process was um, rocky, to say the le- uh, to say the least. Um, I I didn't have the best grades. Uh, like I was getting D one looks from like State, Indiana, mm-hmm. Akron, Central, all them, you know, all the good ones. But my grades weren't where they're supposed to be. But I had some pretty decent offers. I had ten overall. I had all the Glee Act. But what led my decision to Wayne was um, we had an at home visit, and um, the plan was not to commit. Right. So I have a twin brother named Miles, mm-hmm. and he, who who plays safety. So the plan was not to commit. But then you know the vibes of a grade everything you know the family atmosphere that they you know all the culture and everything was great and he ended up committing so then I was like you know what screw it I'm I'm gonna come to it that's been the best decision I made so far throughout my life so Mm -hmm. and I'm reflecting back in your high school career uh you were a highly talented multi-sport athlete in football and basketball but someone who also earned lots of honors and recognition during those years uh to name a few you received first team all-state accolades from both the Detroit Free Press and Detroit News along with Associated Press uh, voted Mackham uh, County Player of the Year and uh, several and a lot more. Uh, but with that said, what do you miss most about high school in general? But what would you say is your all-time favorite memory? Uh, my all-time favorite memory in high school is winning that state championship, uh, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing I miss most about high school, man, is the Friday Night Lights, man, playing on the big stage. You know, for, all, for I mean, for a high school team, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a big stage, you know, with colleges, recruits, all uh, the sports outlets are there, boosters, e- even a couple of pros that we had come back, you know what I'm saying, that that's in the league from uh, Wayne. So, I'm, I mean, not Wayne, from uh, Chippewa. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, and, I that much. Yeah. And then, uh, furthermore, you originally had dreams of being a QB at the varsity <laughs> level, but you guys made the decision to move you to running back. Uh, in an article written by Jared Purcell, you recorded saying, uh, him moving me to running back was the best thing he could have ever done for me. Uh, looking back on this, how did this change your outlook and perception of things on the field, but also in general going forward? So growing up, my dad always taught us to not be one dimensional, not be just, just good at one thing, but be good at multiple things. So through our training process, you know what I'm saying? Like my dad has implemented certain traits and skills in our game to make us you know, more valuable to a team and to, or to a coach so that we can use in more than one area. So, like, I knew the possibility of my position being switched was going to happen, but when they did happen, it was probably the best decision that, you know, throughout my life that's ever been made, just simply because I have the mindset of a quarterback, which I can yeah. look at a defense and tell the coverages and read the defense and everything, but it also helps my vision, when, you know, like when I run, too, because then that, that what, that's what makes me unique as a running back is the fact that I can understand a defense, know what's going to happen, you know what I'm saying, and already, you know what I'm saying, like get the flow. And the holes, and the holes in the defense, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And um, let's go back to your first time where I've been on campus at uh, Wayne State. Uh, the initial expectations, thoughts coming into the program, but also seeing that your 2020 season uh, was canceled due to COVID. How did that impact your outlook, if anything? But also, what do you say you learned most from that experience going into your redshirt year? Um, <clears throat> I would say that the COVID year was more of a blessing than a curse to me because when I was an incoming freshman, you know, you got the responsibility of learning the playbook and stuff, especially if you're expected to play. So it was actually a blessing because I had a whole year to get my body right, you know, learn the playbook, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I understand what Wayne is really about and get acclimated in the culture to see if that's something that I really want to be a part of. And, man, it was great, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, this past season, you were voted to the all uh, GLIAC first team. You were also selected uh, Wayne State's Office of Rookie of the Year, along with uh, a lot of other accolades. Uh, what would you say went well for you this past year? What you're looking to improve most on? But also, on top of that, take us through your experience with your injury that, that uh, had you out the end of the season. So what, so what kept me uh, going the whole year was my grit. Honestly, um, I didn't start until like 
I want to say week seven or week, or week eight. And, you know, my thing was, you know, like whenever I touch the ball, I got to do something with it. No matter how many times I touch it, whether it's five times, 10 times or 20 times, I have to do something with it as if, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm starting. So my grit and my passion, you know what I'm saying? And my drive for the game is what kept me and is what helped me produce, you know, the season that I had this year because it was stressful. Um, mm-hmm. What was the other part? I'm on the uh, what would you say you learned most from uh, your injury, your torn meniscus uh, in the end of the year, not being able to be on the field the uh, rest of the year? Um, well, it hurt because um, I've been through this I mean, injury before in my other leg, which is my right knee. I did that my senior year, mm-hmm. and I played on a completely torn meniscus my whole senior year. And then the, this past year, I partially tore. So I was already kind of prepared for it, mm-hmm. you know, going in, you know, saying like, each time it has taught me something different. And this time I understand that, you know, football isn't for everybody at the same time. This is only a minor setback. So like if anything, I've now like my mental toughness and my mental strength, and, you know what I'm saying? And my capacity has now been strengthened, you know what I'm saying? Like because of this process and I'm more ready than I ever was before, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? To, you know, to get to it. So. Yep. And then uh, talking about recruitment, you know, everything that goes on and AL deals, all the attention and social media plays, it can be a lot. So for you, in your opinion, taking your uh, recruitment process into consideration, what kind of advice do you have athletes in general, just about what maybe they can expect? To, like, I know every school is different, but what can they kind of, what kind of mindset can they have that can help them going into college in general? I was... I would say don't worry about all that stuff because um, all that stuff, you know what I'm saying, like really doesn't matter. And the, and the big payday is coming when you make it to the big leagues. So I would say don't even worry about this stuff because because if you worry about that stuff, it's just like a recruitment process. If I worry about my recruitment process too much, about things that I can't control, that I can't get the most out of, you know, the now and my mm-hmm. experience you know, going forward. So I would say just don't worry about that stuff and just let your game do the talking and the deals will come to you. hmm and um, transitioning over to life off the field, uh, what's a typical day look like for you during the season and also uh, the off season like now? Uh, during the season, you know, school, uh, workouts, practice, you know, then obviously prepping for the game and a little recovery. But off season is what's most important for me. That's the, you know, 6 a.m. lifts, you know what I'm saying, like with the school. And then I come back home, I work out again, and then I go to a professional and I go get some running back training with some speed and agility. Um, and then I come back, you know, chill with the family, maybe ride my road blades, take the dog for a walk or, you know, sit on the deck and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. So, or, but all in all, I'm always watching film though. Always. Yeah, of course. And uh, additionally, talk to us about your major. Uh, what is it about uh, class that you've been taking for it? But more importantly, uh, what led you to it in the first place? Um, I am a psychology major, a criminal justice minor and sports management minor. Uh, I've always been in love with the mind and the brain. I always love knowing why people do things that they do, why they think the way that they do, you know, think why they see things the way that they see things. And I always was, like, I always was good at picking up on why or how or, you know, I'm saying just characteristics and and traits and stuff. But I was like, it would be fascinating to, like, understand, you know, like the science of it all, you know, by taking social psychology teaches you about why people do things, you know, things that they do uh drugs and behavior you know what i'm saying and society showed you how drugs affects a person and society society you know what i'm saying speaking about the world and economically you know all that good stuff so mm-hmm. of course and i'm um, seeing that you have a couple siblings but also a twin brother you mentioned before who also plays for wayne state as a safety uh what's it been like to have your own brother be able to play for the same program as you but also what you'd say you've learned most from him and vice versa <laughs> Man, I love it, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's never a dull moment. And uh, it, it's always fun, too. You know, it's always fun because I'm I'm going into something with somebody that I know, so I'm comfortable, so I'm not as nervous. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but, but one thing that I learned, you know, from him is, you know, just to take it all in and, and seize the moment, you know, because I have a tendency to just go, 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 and always thinking ahead instead of focusing on the now and, mm-hmm. you know, appreciating the moment, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I get stuff in. Uh, I guess you could say he learned something from me is, um, I don't know, just being more out there, you know, putting stuff out there, taking the risk, you know, you know, the appropriate risk, you know what I'm saying, like in sports and in life and stuff. So. Of course. And um, let's talk about uh, more about Wayne State and the program as a whole. Um, what do you say they most pride themselves on 
but also if you had to describe the program in one word or sentence, what would it be? Just one warrior, just just because, you know, like we pride ourselves on being a family. And that's what I love most about Wayne is that when you step foot on that campus, you feel that family, that brotherhood atmosphere. Everybody, you know what I'm saying, knows who you are. Everybody knows each other. You know, it's really, it's and the campus is, is huge too. So like you feel the love spreading throughout the whole campus and especially coming through the, you know, like the, the athletic department. So yeah, just one word, just because, you know, everybody there is considered a family and we're all one, so. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of that, seeing, seeing that you've said it's a very big campus, uh, what's your favorite place to be other than the sports facilities? Favorite place to be, um, I would have to say, either potato place which is a, a good spot down there or just mm -hmm. simply in my apartment just you know chilling with my roommates and my brother and we just having a good time of course and i'm um, looking more into the team the depth chart and everything else in between uh coming off a uh a, a season uh with a record that you aren't happy about what can fans expect from yourself and the team going forward in the this next season but also beyond that well one there is no you know i in team so I, I would say that, you know, to expect a team that's hungry, you know, just ready to work hard and, you know, and, and get it any way we can. You know, I think our motto about being one warrior and being that family, you know, like especially from Detroit, you know what I mean? You got to get out the mud. So I think I think people are going to be shocked this year about mm -hmm. like how so I'm excited for that. Just just expect the hard work a team with a lot of grit, a lot of passion, a lot of fire. And we have a, a, a burning desire and we finally found our why as a whole unit in sound, like as a team. Mm -hmm. And um, for everyone in life, they always have that special someone, you know, a group of people that mean a lot to them in their life and they dedicate a lot of their life to. Who is, who is this individual or group of people for you? And if they were to be listening, uh, what would you have to share with them? Man, my family, man, you know, my parents and my siblings, man. I just I just thank them for, you know, being patient and and during the process, you know, and the hard times and the good times. So, yeah, you know, my family, man. You know, I'm a big family guy. So I take pride in my family and being a unit and, you know, and we all lead by example and lean each other and learning from each other. So, you know, my family. Yeah, of course. And um when your collegiate career eventually comes to an end. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind at Wayne State, but also what you want others to remember you most for during your time with the program on and off the field? And I, I want them to remember me as a guy that, you know, works hard, um, does what needs to be done, and is willing to do, you know, like whatever needs to be done or sacrifice, you know, you know, for the team, for the good of the team. I'm not, I don't want to be known as that selfish guy or that selfish player. I'm always thinking about somebody for myself, so I want to be known as that. Mm hmm and um, last question, what might be next for your future as an athlete and individual after college? Or uh, as you mentioned before, are you more, more so focused on what happens day to day and staying focused on the present until that time comes around? I mean, we all have dreams. So like, you know, like I want to go to the NFL, of course, but you know, you got to live day by day because if I focus too much on that, then I won't seize the moment now and I won't be the best that I can be in you know, the present. So you know, just more so day to day with, with the goal in mind, you know, of course, but I need to make the most out of, you know, the present to get to that goal. So. Mm -hmm. Of course. And um, once again, Myron Harris, uh, Wayne State running back. Uh, Myron, really appreciate you taking the time today and wish you nothing but the best of the future, man. Man, thank you so much. Of course.